Hey guys, welcome to another essential tutorial. So today we're going to be learning how to transform one object into another object via particles. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at how this is built. So we're going to be using uh, 3ds Max 2014 for this tutorial, and uh, we're going to be using Particle Flow. So you can see if I just uh, tap six here and just take a look at uh, particle flow setup. Uh, we're going to be using the birth grid operator in order to achieve this effect. So let me just uh, set this up here so I can create a new one from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to need uh, two things. I'm going to need a starting object. In this case, I'm just going to make a sphere for an example. So starting object, and let's have it turn into a box. Let's change this, make it smaller. Let's put this up here as well. Okay, so let's just create a new empty flow. And let's create a birth grid operator. Let's connect those together. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is if you just tap H here, we can bring up our uh, selection menu. Go to our newly created uh, grid. And let's just create, or let's just change the uh, the icon size here to 100 squared. So let's take our starting object here, and I'm just going to rename it here. And let's just align it so that it sits within this volume here. So let's select the object we want to move, hit Alt A, and we're just going to select our grid. And so selecting birth grid, you're going to want to enable restrict by mesh volume. And for reference geometry, let's just tap H here. You want it to select our starting object. Okay, so you can see that it's not actually showing any particles right now other than ticks. So we're going to need to enable a shape for each one of these particles. So let's put in a shape operator. And the reason why you're still not seeing anything is because we need to change the type from ticks to geometry. It's just a display type. So you can see that initially it's, uh, it's creating all of these cubes as representations of each one of those particles. How this whole entire flow is going to work is that we want it to be generating these particles, which they're already doing. Then after a certain amount of time, we want to have them jump to the next event. And so we're going to control that by the age of the particle. So let's just add in an age test here. And I'm just going to change it to 25 with a variance of 5. So that just means that when the particle reaches an age of 25, jump into the next event, which is what we're going to set up now. So let's use the random walk operator. And just connect it to our age test event here. And you can see it's already taking effect. So as soon as we get to an age of 25, um, you can see that the particles jump into the next event because they're testing true. The reason why they're only displaying text is again because you need to change the display type to geometry so we can see what their actual form is. You can actually change the um, particle shape. By default it is cube, but there are other uh, types of shapes um, as presets within the shape. If you want to use something custom, um, just say you have your own 3D model that you generate that you want to use as a particle, you can use the shape instance operator and just you would select um, the reference geometry that you want to use. But in this case, we're content with just using the cube. Let's, uh, let's change the size of it though. Let's change it to two so that they're smaller. Okay, and so I'm just going to right click on our sphere here and I'm just going to go display this box and make it not renderable just so that uh, we can see what they look like. Okay, so now we have two events. These, uh, it's birthing the particles along our starting object and then it's jumping to event two after they reach part or particle age of 25. Um, 
but now there's there there's no instructions for it to do anything else. So we need to have them flow back, um, essentially give them another instruction to then target their positions towards uh, another reference object. And we do that using the find target operator here. Okay, so in order to connect these two events, we need to give it um, another age test so that we want it to be moving out. And let's just say when they get to an age of around 100, that that's when they go to the next event. So let's just put in uh, age test, connect it to our event. And again, we need to change this to geometry. Okay, so when they hit an age of, let's just say 120, and with the particle variance of 50, so plus or minus 50, um, we want it to find target. Find target uh, by default doesn't have any object selected by default, so we need to set it to be targeting a mess object. And in this case, we want it to be our ending object. Under our find target mesh object, let's go add and just select our ending object box here. And so now you can see that particles are going to be starting to flow towards our secondary object. So what's happening is that they're hitting the target object, but then there's no further instructions. So we want to, that as soon as they test that they've hit the surface normal, we want them to stop. So let's just put in a stop operator here and connect it. So what you're gonna see is that now, as soon as they hit a surface normal, they're stopping. And so let's display it to geometry as well. So you want to control by time. Let's do the same thing we did to the sphere. If we just take this object and we have display as box and not renderable so it's see-through and we can see just the particles alone. You can see how the effect is working. So in order to add a bit of interest um, we're going to use a spin uh, operator in order to just add a bit of variance. So now you can see that as they're processing through the event six in the random walk operator. There's adding a bit of spin there. So there's a bit of interest as far as how the particles are moving. But you can see that now that as they land on the object, they're stopping in the exact same rotation um, that was true when they hit that surface normal. So we want to set the rotation of the particle back to its original um, zero, zero, zero position. So let's uh, use the rotation operator here so that as soon as it stops, we also want it to, in world space, we want it to be back to its zero, zero, zero. And you can see that now that's the case. Now that we have our working simulation, we have one object turn into another object we want to render this out. Um, and so we want to be able to use this simulation within Element 3D. So in order to do that, um, there's a script that I use, which on each individual frame, it's going to export an OBJ snapshot. Within Element 3D, you're able to import OBJ sequences and have them rendered uh, in real time. So what we're going to need before um, we export our OBJ sequence is we're going to need a mesher. What a mesher is, is it's going to convert uh, our particle flow into an instance of um, the 3D model. So if we go to uh, mesher and drag it into the scene here, then go to modify and pick objects, hit H again, and we're going to want to select our particle flow source, which is source number three. So now we can see an instance of uh, that particle flow, and uh, it just makes it 
easier to export the 3D model um, that we're going to want with an Element 3D. So you're just going to want to select your measure. You want to come up to Max Script, Run Script, and run Export OBJ Sequence. And so within the OBJ uh, Sequence Export script, um, you can set a start, an ending, and you're going to want to have a target folder for which you're going to export your OBJ sequence. So let's just go to our tutorials, set uh, an OBJ export sequence. Okay, so let's just call this uh, sphere to cube and just hit export. So it's now going to go frame by frame and it's going to export our entire object sequence into the folder that we selected. Let's just um, jump into After Effects here now. Let's create a new composition. Create a new layer. And if you go to uh, Effect, Element 3D. So you want to go to File, Import, and Import 3D Sequence. And you're going to go to the uh, sequence that you exported. Just click on the first one here. OK, so now we can see uh, the model that we exported. So let's just uh, change the material. I'm going to create a new uh, camera. So under the settings, we're going to want to uh, change a few things here. Let's uh, have the background display. Let's um, enable soft shadows. Put on uh, ambient occlusion. Let's just uh, set it from loop here to uh, freeze at the end, so it only just plays once. I'm just going to uh, trim down my composition here so it's not so long. So just trim it down to like 15 seconds. Let's animate our camera. So I went ahead and RAM previewed uh, everything here so you guys can see what it looks like. And keep in mind, you guys can uh, change the materials, the lighting. There's a bunch of different features of Element 3D that you can change in order to get a different look. Right now, I'm just using a basic shader. But if you wanted to change the materials, you can go into the scene setup and play around with a physical material shaders that they have available and tweak it to your heart's content. You can also add in lighting and Element 3D does react to any custom lights that you do input on your own. For the sake of simplicity for this tutorial, I'm just going to have the default lighting um, that's included in one of the presets. But the other thing you guys can do as well is you, under the camera settings, you can add depth of field if you want to have that shallow uh, focus look. It just adds that extra level of realism. 
You can also animate um, the focus distance to follow a specific point of interest. I'm going to animate the, uh, the aperture as well here. Let's put on a uh, adjustment layer. What I like to do is uh, put on a tritone. Let's put on a uh, glow as well. And a uh, vignette. So here's a, uh, a RAM preview of how the product is going to look. Now keep in mind that there's going to be tons of ways that you can apply this to your own projects based on what kind of 3D models you're using, what materials you're using, and how you animate your own camera movement. The other thing too that uh, you might want to try is animating multiple camera positions and cutting it together. So let me know in the, uh, the comments below if you guys had any projects that you wanted to see me make. Um, but if not, I hope you guys learned something useful, and I'll see you next time.